Aloha. What's going on? Hey, so we'll do uh, web authoring programs today, and this is William, and um, let's see what I got to say about that. All right. So our first part here, we have websites. Okay, I hope you all know what a website is. Uh, but it's a collection of related web pages. Okay, so you usually have a common theme, and we call that a website with lots of web pages. And gosh, probably over a billion websites on the internet, um, you know, probably more than that at this point, right? And yeah, all kind of websites. So for organizations, say for countries, okay, so pretty sophisticated uh, websites. And then also you might have, you know, different uh, kind of websites for individuals, all right? So they're posting blogs or weblogs. So that's kind of like an online diary or informal commentaries. All right, so those, those kind of things will be more opinionated. All right, so you just got to think, okay, when you're on the World Wide Web, all right, now what are they trying to get across? Okay, if it's a company's website, okay, well, are they saying only good things about their products? You know, usually so. All right, so then, oh, that's not that balanced maybe. Or you can look at, say, an uh, individual's website or, or um, blog, all right, so they might have a certain strong opinion about something, right? Okay, so my, uh, that's not that balanced either, yeah. So you just got to really think about um, who's writing the website or what organization, and um, that'll kind of flavor, okay, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but that'll flavor, you know, what's, what's being put out there, okay? A lot of times, um, you know, websites that are peer evaluated, so many different people from different backgrounds are contributing to it or are editing it. Right, typically, that'll be a little bit more balanced than, say, um, I don't want to name any uh, organizations or news uh, sites, but um, just uh, kind of think about the background or, or, or who's putting the information out there on the website. Okay, though, let's, let's get some more details about websites, though. Let's see here. Um, okay, so we're talk more a bit about web authoring. Okay, so this is the creation of a website. And typically, two-step process. You're like, what? Two-step process? What's up? First step, create your layout or design of a web page, or a website, for that matter. Um, it's just like building a house or uh, building some kind of structure, uh, you want to have a blueprint first, right? You don't want to just go and start hammering nails uh, into some wood. You want to figure out uh, your plan first. All right, once you're kind of satisfied with your plan, you talk to over other people, you know, everyone's kind of in agreement, then you'll go out and start creating your files. Okay, typically it's HTML files, and that's going to display the content of your what website okay so again two steps and it's pretty typical with most things yeah so uh, what's the Dal De Ching say like start start the start things while they're small before they get too big something like that what a journey of a thousand steps uh, starts with one step right At any rate um, tackle things while they're, they're small okay so Make your plan, think about your plan before you start uh, doing your plan is the basic um, thinking for that, yeah. Okay, so let's see what's next here. And uh, graphical site map. Hey, that's the state of Alabama there. That's where I'm from. Cool. Okay, often the website has a graphical site map. So just like a regular map, you can kind of you look at a map and figure out where you're at and then where you're going and where things are. So same thing uh, with a website. Okay, it's a visual representation of the website, uh, this the site map, and you can use it to navigate the uh, website. Okay, so just like when you got a map and you're navigating with your map. Okay, hopefully someone else is navigating for you. And you're not reading your map or whatever. Um, the website too, you got a map to a website, okay, so site map, it's, it's good to have. All right, let's see, what's next here? 
Then uh, you might have some multimedia elements. Ooh, that sounds kind of fancy there. Multimedia elements on a web page. All right, so that can be things like text. Doesn't sound too fancy, but words, all right? You might have some images, okay, kind of some visual things to, to get your point across. You want to balance out that with your text. Uh, maybe some audio. That, you know, lately it's not so big. You know, it used to be you open up a website or a web page and it starts playing music, but lately not so much unless you do like a YouTube video. And videos, okay, you might have a video on your site. And then maybe some animation. Okay, so that kind of goes together. They call it multimedia. So those are some things you might add to your site to kind of spiff it up. And uh, animations. Let's see. So they can make your web pages more interactive, more exciting. And a common tool for this is Adobe Flash. So that gives some pretty spiffy uh, animations with that. Again, just to be careful with animations, if you have kind of too much going on, too much jazzy stuff, then um, it's kind of distracting. So it's kind of like we talked about, uh, I think, in the previous um, presentation. All right, you want to get your point across, so you want to emphasize your point, maybe with some kind of woo animation. Cool. But um, if you animate everything, people are going to wonder, well, what's your point? Yeah, you're animating all the points. So that's my point, right? All right, so let's see what's next here. And we have HTML editors. OK, so what is this? It's a fancy text editor for creating web pages. So you can use something such as Notepad, something real simple like that. Um, but uh, the more fancy ones, usually there's some kind of automatic features. They kind of help with writing the HTML and the CSS code. And uh, like one thing they do is once you have one HTML tag, so if you studied HTML before, you'll know there's an opening tag and then there's a closing tag. So a lot of times uh, with these HTML editors, they'll make the opening tag and then automatically it'll create also the closing HTML tag. So that, that's great. It's just you know, a little less typing and then a lot of times you can forget to close your HTML tag. Oh, I forgot to close my HTML tag. What's going to happen? Oh no. So web browsers are pretty forgiving. They will still display your web page. Uh, it might not be legitimate or valid code that's in there, but at least it displays. At any rate, so the editors are great too. Uh, they might show you some choices, what tags you want to use, or what uh, CSS um, choices that you have, what kind of attributes, what kind of uh, different colors or stuff you want to use, that kind of stuff. So they're, uh, they're great. I mean, you can just type everything in, but these are real great with uh, helping to make choices and automatically fill in text. Yeah, so you don't have to like, type so much, man. OK, so let's see what's next here. And we have, OK, so you might see this and think, all right, so what WYSI, W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G, what's that? OK, so usually we pronounce this as WYSIWYG. So that's an acronym for what you see is what you get. OK, so this kind of editing program has a display that looks kind of similar to the final document. Um, so that's, it's not exactly the same as your web page, but looks real similar to it. OK, so again, it's called WYSIWYG. Uh, so if you see W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G, you're like, what? We say a WYSIWYG. And uh, you know, if you actually put the web page in a browser, then that's the real look. But this is something kind of close to that. A lot of times you can drag and, uh, drag and drop things over and type stuff in, and, and then it just kind of comes right up. And you don't have to do so much coding. You usually have to do a little coding, but uh, with the WYSIWYG editors, uh, a lot less, yeah. OK, so let's see what we got next. OK, so, and then you don't have to know our C, for that matter, HTML and CSS code. It, it kind of hides it behind the scenes and fills it in automatically. Uh, usually at some point, though, you do have to know that kind of code. 
Okay, so let's see what kind of editors that y'all can use to do this stuff. Uh, one is Microsoft Visual Web Developer. So that's actually um, what uh, free software that's out there. Then there's Microsoft Expression Web. And then a big thing is Adobe Dreamweaver. So this is pretty big with a lot of companies that make web pages. And then some other uh, composer. Um, well, they got iWeb, they have Flux, and then there's tons of other stuff out there. Um, I think one that a student recommended was called something like Taco, Taco Edit. So, um, you know, there, there's a ton of stuff out there for uh, editing web pages. So you can kind of find your favorite thing, and a lot of them are uh, either affordable or um, free. <laughs> okay, I like free, man. How about y'all? Okay. So that's about all I got to say about that. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see y'all a little later. Okay. Aloha. <laughs>